Hello and welcome to Project 5P. Uh, at the time of filming this, uh, there is a national fertilizer shortage. So I'm out here mucking the stalls of the horses and uh, it uh, just made me think of that because when you've got animals like these guys out here, where are they at? Whoop, right there. And another one right there. Uh, there's no shortage of fertilizer. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, we've got more fertilizer than I know what to do with. There is, I mean, we can walk everywhere and there will be fertilizer. But, I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. But that's the goal, right? When you're homesteading, you want, and you're trying to be uh, self-sufficient, you establish those, those cycles, those permaculture um, principles to where you're providing, um, or your animals are providing, uh, the fertilizer for you to grow more food and as you grow more food the food feeds you know depending on what it is can feed both the animals back and um uh feed your family you know you're growing crops based with with that fertilizer and as you're doing that the animals themselves are feeding you as well because depending on what type of crops you're growing depending on what type of animals you want to raise um, that's a personal issue but um, that will, those animals will in turn feed you because cows make great fertilizer and they taste yummy. Uh, chickens, great fertilizer, um, and you, you know, get meat and eggs from them. It's just, uh, depends on your personal scenario. You know, horses, horse fertilizer might not be for everybody, depending on your personal situation, depending on what your homestead is like, um, and the return on investment, depending on what, you know what you've got going on in your homestead uh, horses might not be a good return on investment for everybody um, depending on like I said the tasks that you have on your homestead and what you got going on let me see if these Dixie here is eaten out of these guys trough and they came to see what she was up to and uh, they gave her one look and backed off she tends to be a little bit moody. Let's see if she'll say hi, though. Hey. Want to say hi? Want to say hi? Look it. Say hi. You hungry? You eating all their... Are you eating all their oats? Huh? They're going to get mad. You know that, right? Huh? All right, go back to it. Um, but there you go. You feed, you feed your animals... Uh, they in turn produce fertilizer for you and that same fertilizer um, can can and will grow more plants crops even the grass even the the uh, your, you know your normal uh, feed that you would feed the animals and it's a cycle right and that's the goal again choose your animals wisely what what do you like to eat um, and that what do you like to grow because certain plants and certain crops and certain um, orchards depending on different trees different plants different uh, styles of fruits and vegetables uh, do better with different types of fertilizer and different amounts of fertilizer so all that is on an individual basis but my point is the goal is self-sufficiency right when you're working on preparedness the goal is self-sufficiency and animals are a big part of that and they can be a big very big important integral part of uh preparedness of that cycle because like i said right now in situations like this where there's a national um shortage of fertilizer there's no shortage of fertilizer here that's for sure um so do a little research get you some animals that's the goal right uh feed them and get that cycle going Get that cycle going, use that fertilizer, don't dispose of it, use that fertilizer to grow you more food uh, that will feed both them and you and the animals themselves will feed you. Alright, get after it. <laughs>